Hello, and welcome back to my playthrough of Pokemon Scarlet and Violet, the Teal Mask DLC. We're going to get right back into it here. So, first, we're going to go into Kieran's house. We're on the second day of the festival. I uh, still don't know what's going to happen. Uh, apparently, we're going to tell his grandpa about it, which uh, might not be the best idea, because he's probably just going to tell it straight to Kieran. But uh, we're going to go with it anyway. Hey, David Ferg, good morning. Tsk. He's awake, huh? Want to go see the last signboard? Kiki, go find somewhere else to be. Wow. Oh, David Frick's got business with me. Okay, she's about to punch him. Seriously? He's spending all his time with you. That's so unfair. You can be such a jerk. Yeah, Kieran, fight back. What'd you just call me? Oh, shit. <laughs> Never mind, Kieran. Wrong choice. You better, you better take it back right now. Hmm. <laughs> What's his deal? Kiki should know better than to talk back to me like that. Dude, you are an asshole. Like, what? Kiki, <laughs> why are you such an ass? He can talk back as much as he wants. Be kind to your younger brother. I was being kind. It's not like I hit him or anything. Yeah, right, buddy. I mean, uh, I don't know what you do. You scare the shit out of me. Anyway, we've got to import... We've got more important things to discuss, right, David Ferg? Come on, you gotta show Grandpa that thing you have. Sure. Dude, even Grandpa looks terrified of her. Like, look at him standing there. He's got his head down, terrified of what she might do if he retaliates. This mask, it belongs to that poor ogre. Where did you find this? We bumped into it. The ogre, I mean. Yesterday at the Festival of Masks. I tried talking to it all nice and everything, but it dropped that mask and, yeah. I never would have thought that the ogre would still be gracing our festival with its presence. Huh? What do you mean, still? I thought the ogre was a scoundrel that attacked the village. I suppose it's time I told you, Carmine. You see, the truth of what happened with that ogre is the other way around. Dude, this guy, he might get thrown out of the village for saying this stuff. You should hear this too, David Ferg. You also met the poor ogre, or Ogre Pond, as it's rightly named. Let me tell you the true story as passed down through our family for generations. Okay. Really? Why, why did they? Why did the game take you out of that conversation just to put you right back in? That's fun. It's a real, uh, it was really necessary. This is going to be a bit of a long story to tell. Is that all right? No, absolutely not. Grandpa, hurry it up. Give me the gist. Well, do let me know when it's all right then. He was creeping on my picture. You're in big trouble, buddy. I saw you looking at me like that. This is going to be a bit of a long story to tell. Is that our idea? Yes, it's fine, dude. Now I want to hear it. Let's see what he has to say. This story has been passed down in our family by word of mouth. I learned it from my father. It's a story of truths. A story that must never be told to the rest of the village. Jeez, dude. Wh why does your family know this? Like, what? You must never speak of it to others. Okay. Wow, even Carmine's listening. I would have expected her to, like, get pissed off and run away. A long, long time ago, a man and an ogre came to Kitakami from a foreign land. Dang, this is a whole drawn cutscene. Look at this. Look at that guy's eyes. What, what the? Okay. The people of the village feared the man and the ogre, who looked so different from them. So, racism? So they refused to let the travelers come anywhere near the village. That's messed up. The man and the ogre were saddened that the villagers did not welcome them, but they were happy just to have each other. They settled quietly in a cave on the mountain. There was only one villager who pitied the two travelers, the village mask maker. He made several masks for the man and the ogre. Ah, so they could go into the town? The masks were brilliant works, adorned with gems the man brought from somewhere far away. But wearing these masks, the travelers could hide their true faces and mingle with the villagers. Oh, is their family the mask maker's family? Uh, okay. The man and the ogre were overjoyed. They thanked the mask maker for his kindness. Wearing the masks, the man and the ogre started secretly joining the village festival. The mysterious pair soon became the talk of the village because of their brilliant masks. In fact, rumors about them quickly spread far and wide, even to distant lands. Aw, oh, look at the Squirtle mask on that one. Is that a, uh, oh my gosh, Poliwhirl, I think. Hoot hoot. Cool. Ferret. But rumors of exquisite shining masks attract more than just innocent curiosity. Thieves. A group of greedy Pokemon soon made their way to the land of Kitakami. These Pokemon sneaked into the cave in which the man and the ogre lived, and tried to make off with the masks, which were carefully stored away. The man happened to be there. 
he managed to hold on to one of the masks, but he was not strong enough to protect them all. The Pokemon stole the other three masks. Several hours later, when the ogre returned to the cave, it found its beloved home in ruin. All that was left were the signs of a struggle and a teal mask. Oh my god! Teal mask! The ogre donned the mask and went down to the village, perhaps to search for its friend, with a club ready to kill any villagers in its path. It found the greedy Pokemon there gloating over their stolen masks and defeated them. The villagers, of course, had no idea what was happening, nor why. All they saw was the raging ogre, and they felt great fear. That's fair. The villagers thought the three Pokemon had fallen, trying to protect the village from the ogre. Huh. To honor their sacrifice, the three villagers named them the Guardians, I think. I did not read that. Wounded and weak, the ogre returned to its cave alone and with great sadness. Huh. So the ogre is good. The cute looking ogre is not a bad thing? Wow. Who would have thought? That's terrible. Ogre Pond didn't deserve that, and the loyal three, they're the worst. Dude, why are you so, like, nice when it comes to this thing? And then you freaking beat your brother, like, and are complete, like, almost an abuser, dude. Like, what? what is with this double standard? The story everyone's been told is the complete opposite of the truth. They gotta hear about this. Calm yourself, Carmine. I told you already to keep it to yourself. But Grandpa, the villagers believed their own version of history. They revered the loyal three. So how would they react to being told that they've got it all wrong? They'd be pissed and put your head on a pike, Grandpa. They'd probably get angry? Exactly. Back when this all first occurred, the mask maker, that is to say our ancestor, tried desperately to tell the truth of the matter, and he got ostracized. But nobody would take him seriously. In fact, it's said that he was persecuted as a heretic. So yeah, wow, you might actually have your head on a pike, Grandpa. I'm gonna go tell them. I'm just kidding. Ooh, that's really getting my blood boiling. In the end, the mask maker chose to protect his descendants, us, by keeping his mouth shut. However, he kept the truth alive, passed down from generation to generation as a family secret. I see. Kiki doesn't know the whole story yet, does he? He shouldn't know. I've certainly never spoken to him about it. Why do you ask? I don't know. He just seems to really like the ogre. He's practically obsessed, and he's been trying to one-up me as if he knows more about Ogre Pond than I do. Well, I can't say what's going on with the boy, but he's always was a sensitive child. <laughs> it wouldn't surprise me if he somehow intuited the truth. I promise to tell Kieran the whole story when the time is right. It's probably a good idea. Until then, take care not to breathe a word of the truth to anybody. Okay, Grandpa. I won't let the villagers chop your head off. Now, I really can't tell Kiki we met the ogre. About that mask you showed me, I noticed the jewel on its forehead was chipped. I might be able to fix it. Would you mind leaving the mask with me for a little while? All right, but don't don't take it and use for use it for your own personal gain, Grandpa. Go on a bloodthirsty killing spree or something. Oh, uh, might it got maybe it got chipped when it fell down the stairs. Since Grandpa's offering, let's get it all nice and fixed up before we go give it back to Ogre Pond. All right, you gave the teal mask to Carmine's grandfather. Don't you worry. I'll be sure to take good care of this. Thanks. Oh, yikes. Dude, Kieran's gonna steal the mask, kill the village for his beloved Ogre Pond. I want to see Ogre Pond again, but getting its mask fixed will have to come first. For now, we should carry on with orienteering before Kiki gets suspicious. I bet we'll find Kiki just killing time somewhere in town. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, with this fence, with how this fence is, I'm pretty sure... Kieran would have been in direct line of sight of Grandpa as soon as he walked away. I, like, how how did you not see him, buddy? He's going blind. All right, let's go move on. Let's see. Where did Kieran go? Oh, my God. Oh, I'm so sorry, Kieran. I'm so sorry. Oh, uh, hey, David Ferg. So I, I was going to ask, what were you and my sis just uh talking about? Wait, so... Are, are you really just blowing your cover here? Like, what? He was supposed to be waiting in town. What? It's not normal for him to be here. And for him to say that to me. What? He just blew his whole thing. <laughs> Nothing much. We were talking about you, Kieran. Making fun of you again. It's our favorite pastime, me and Carmine. Oh, I, I see. So, so, about those signs. The last one's a bit of a hike away. It's in the Paradise Barrens on the other side of the Oni Mountain. We'll need to head over the mountain and down the northwest. You go on ahead. I'll catch up. All right. 
I'm just gonna head straight to the second signboard. Oh, why? Why'd you lie to me? Sorry, bud. There was no option not to. Last signboard. Uh, that's not what I want. Oh, it's literally right here. I'm just gonna fast travel. All right, nice. So I just talked to this. Paradise Barrens. These are the Paradise Barrens. Pretty lonely place, huh? According to the old legends, the ogre used to be seen around here a lot. Hey, before we check out the sign, could you battle me? Uh, okay, I guess. I've battled these two, brother and sister, like six times since I've gotten here. And that's like the only thing I've done. It's kind of weird. I feel like there should be more wild stuff, you know, wild Pokemon stuff going on. But I really like the music though. That sounds good. I want to win. I want to win. So I got this. <laughs> Saying I want to win twice doesn't mean anything, Kieran. You're going to get your butt whooped. Okay. Eh, probably not a good typing here. I think I just switched to Palmy or uh, Potty. I think the uh, actual name for it is Palmo. It's very confusing because I renamed, nicknamed this one for some reason. Let's see. Let's just discharge. I'm sure it'll kill. I'm pretty high level. Okay, I guess not. Probably just should have wild charged. I should have thought things through. It wasn't supposed to go like this. Dude, I haven't killed a single one of your Pokemon and you're already whining. You have four. Nice. Polyrath. Uh, I think I can kill it with a wild charge. It's pretty bulky though. And I'm not sure if Pomo is a special attacker or physical. Oh, jeez. Not good. Armo's gonna die here. Yeah, it's pretty embarrassing for uh, having a Pokemon that's level 79. The reason I haven't evolved it is because the evolving condition is just really annoying. <laughs> and I, I haven't gotten around to it. Ah, uh, I think we'll switch into Scizor here. Uh, I think I could just X Scissor, right? Wow, good job doing nothing. Why did I use X Scissor there? I knew what I was doing and I just did it anyway. Hydro Pump. Wow. I am super over leveled. It's alright. For the uh, Indigo Disc, I'm gonna try to make a whole new team. Make sure I'm not over leveled because I want it to be challenging for the uh, actual fights. This one, I'm kind of in it for more of the story. Uh, for it, we'll keep in. I think we'll be fine here. Tidy up. I don't think I've ever seen that move in my life. Is that new? Someone let me know. Critical hit. Nice. Oh no, I can't keep up. You sure can't, Karen. You should get your legendary out. Diplin? Why does it have to be like this? Why? Because you suck. You, I mean, the last battle, I beat you with the dang Mighty Anna that was on your level, and you still lost. So, what do you think is going to happen when you go against the league champion? It's a new move. Nice. Defeated Kieran. Oh god, look at his eyes for a second there. Terrifying. It's all because I'm too weak. Yep. I mean, your sister's probably been telling you this forever. And you're still weak, so I don't think this is going to change much. Oh boy. It's because I'm weak. That's why I... Oh, he's about ready to let loose here. We should go check out the sign. Come on, let's get this over with. Dang, he's depressed. He's emo. If you see a shadowy figure approaching you outside the village at twilight, be wary. Don a mask at once and hide your face. Do so, and whether the shadow is a man or a monster, you will pass each other by as fellow mask wearers. If you should meet the shadow when you have no mask in hand, then pray that it is only a man. If it is, you will live to see another day. You will remember to never forget your mask again. But if it is the ogre, you will meet your end, as do all humans who face whose faces are seen by it. Jeez. Once it sees your face, your soul will be forfeit, and you shall never return to the village. Yeah, that's why I'm still here. I didn't have a mask on my face. In the old days, everyone carried masks wherever they went, and the one who made those masks was actually my great-great-great-grandpa. Oh, wait. My great-great-great-grandpa's great-great-great-grandpa, or something. Wow. Can we get a Legends Kitakami game? I want to see that. That's amazing. Honestly, that would be kind of a cool DLC if you could travel back in time in Kitakami and have it be like a whole different thing where you experience all the stuff firsthand. I mean, I don't think any of that stuff about the ogre stealing souls is true or anything, but it is true that our family used to make masks. Our family has a long line of mask makers. Even my gramps can make them. 
I even heard that the reason we hold the festival of masks is because our ancestors came up with the idea. But I don't really like what they wrote on this sign here. Just because the ogre seemed sort of scary, everyone got all afraid of it and drove it away. Drove it away from the village. But I'm pretty sure the ogre must have been lonely on its own. Left all alone like that, treated like some sign to- Oh my god. Left all alone like that, treated like some kind of outcast. Just like you, Kieran. You're all alone in an outcast. You're right. You're right, Kieran. Oh, I want to get that mole checked out, Kieran. You think so too, huh, David Frigg? Yep. I don't know why we have a close-up of your mouth. It's kind of weird. Want to take that last photo? <laughs> look at his stance. Oh, boy. <laughs> look at my stance. I look so awkward. <laughs> That's a great photo. <laughs> We're all done with our assignment now. But I've got to get stronger with my Pokemon. I'm going to head home. Dang, he's pissed now. He was at least smiling for the last one. Let's get some rest at the community center. Sure. All right, back at the community center here in Masui Town. Pretty sure we're just going to go inside and uh, get some rest, and then we're going to go back out. I still haven't done anything with this lady, so I wonder what story is going to come from that. Ready to call it a night? Yep. Briar, right? Oh, one of my classmates. Good morning, David Ferg. Carmine wanted to tell you... <laughs> Carmine wanted me to tell you that she's waiting at her place. She said, you better get a move on and don't keep me waiting. All right, how many times am I going to have to go over to her place before we start dating? It's getting pretty annoying, Carmine. I think we might as well just get it over with here. Oh, it's this kid again. I got some pocket money. Okay, then. Get a job. David Frigg, you took your sweet time. Dude, I sprinted over here on like a magical monster, okay? There's no way to go faster, all right? There's no cars in this town. It's like a single, it's like a singular block. There's no like transport, public transport. I literally rode a, a beast at 30 miles an hour through your town to get to you. Y you need to calm down. We wanted to talk to you before Kiki wakes up. I wanted to fix Deer Ogre Pond's masks, but I'll need one more material if I want to do a proper job of it. Yeah. According to Grandpa, we need to get the cr a crystal cluster from the bottom of crystal pool Ooh, i have not been up there i want to see that i mean we could just return the mask at it as it is but i think it would make ogre pond really happy if we fixed it up first why is she so nice to this ogre but a complete b to everyone else around her it's a little weird and suspicious yeah i bet it would especially now i've heard the real story i just want ogre pond to be happy you know yeah, how about you let your brother be happy, okay? You're ruining his life, Carmine. I'm sure Ogre Pond will be pleased to know you care so much for it, right? I'm sure your brother would be pleased as well, but you don't care about him. Morning, Grandpa. Ah, good morning, Kieran. Kiki, you better go kill some time somewhere. Yeah, yeah, do whatever you want, sis. Excuse me? I don't need that kind of attitude from you. I got stuff to do, okay? We are getting ever closer to a lawsuit. Because I will press charges on Carmine if she hits him. Even if Kieran doesn't want me to. He has been manipulated by this woman for too long. I've got stuff to do, okay? See ya. What's his problem? He's been all bent out of shape since yesterday. Yeah, I'd be pretty bent out of shape if I was anywhere in your vicinity, Carmine. I don't know. He spent the evening in his room without so much as a bite of dinner. Must be teen angst or something. It happens. Carmine, if there's a singular person who knows about teen angst... It would definitely be you, because you are <laughs> you are just pissed at the world and everyone in it. It would be kind of hard to get stuff done with Kiki clinging to you, David Ferg. Guess things worked out in our favor. The crystal pool is at the top of Oni Mountain. I'm usually not too keen on outsiders heading up the mountain, but I think we can make an exception for you. <laughs> it's not like you own the mountain. I mean, I can do whatever I want. I can climb it right now on my own. Sure. Okay, we have made it to Oni Mountain. I am heading up. The final stairs, the crystal pool. Oh my gosh, look at this. Oh, look at how much stuff just spawned right there. Wow, wow, look at this. Long ago, the crystal pool was infused with crystalline material from an unknown source. Its water has a faint glow, but it's safe to drink and even serves as the village's water source. That's interesting. Tales saying that gazing upon the glow, tales say that gazing upon the glowing water can allow you to meet those who have passed on. What? Whoa. So where did the crystals come from, right? Like, hmm, what's up? There you are, David Frigg. 
Come on, get a load of this view. It is kind of pretty. If only the frame rate weren't going at two frames a second. This is the crystal pool, but you didn't expect it to be so pretty, huh? The crystals here are always shining. Isn't that strange? There's even a weird rumor that you can meet people here who have passed on. Now we'll just need to get a little bit of the crystal from the bottom of the pool so we can fix the mask properly. That's interesting. So they made the masks out of the crystals that are in the crater. Where did the crater come from? I still don't know. I mean, there's that theory that it's that guy from uh, Kalos with the uh, giant cannon thing that they used in the war. So maybe it's that, but I, I wonder if there's a real reason in the DLCs. Wait, you want me to jump in? Yes, I'm gonna jump into your sacred pool. Well, yeah, I can't swim. And besides, my clothes would get soaked if I did. Yeah, mine are, would too, dude. You've got a real nifty Pokemon to ride on, right? You'll be fine. Oh my God. What in the? An earthquake? What is this? What is going on? Oh my god. Whoa. A Milotic? Cool. Awesome. Wait, why do I get two Pokemon to face a Milotic? Oh, we're double battling it, but there's only one? This looks strong. Can I just catch it? No. Okay. Well, uh, hmm. I think let's both put in a tiny baby electric Pokemon and we'll be fine. You're more Peko and my Pomo. Two Pikachu clones against one Milotic or Melodic. I don't know. Oh my gosh. I should have just hit it with Blood Moon, huh? It's weak. Come on, let's finish this. Yeah, couldn't you have just fought this yourself? I didn't think we need to do this double battle thing. It's kind of kind of brutally killing this thing. I'm going to hit your oh, Peko. Never mind, it's over. You just did it all on your own. Great. Sheesh, that surprised me. Now that I... Now that I think about it, Pokemon like that one do show up here from time to time. You know, you're pretty handy to have around in a battle, aren't you? I didn't.